Welcome back. Now, is this the end of roads as we know them? The government today published a major re-evaluation of town planning strategy. And the report endorses a concept that's called shared space, a new trend in urban street design. As Andrew Thomas reports, it could change fundamentally the face of Britain's towns. Stop signs, one-way streets, pedestrian barriers, curbs, constant lights, the necessary evils of urban life. But a new road and traffic management strategy is gathering pace, one that says that far from necessary, road clutter is merely evil, often doing more harm than good. Everywhere I go around the country, you see so much uh, streetscape, which is of a poor quality, based on the ideas of segregation. You see guardrails and traffic signals and bollards and curbs and markings. Today, the Department of Transport launched a manual for streets, a major study that recognises a new philosophy in street design and traffic management, one that has the potential to revolutionise how our towns and cities look and operate. The landmark study into town planning was published in the 1960s and the Buchanan reports dominated the next four decades. Whichever way you look at it, towns seem to be all wrong for motor traffic. At the heart of the report was that in order to keep traffic flowing and pedestrians safe, the two should be kept separate. Separate like this with barriers, walkways and tunnels, roads that are no-go for pedestrians but are also snarl-ups for traffic. Well, today's report rejects all that, turning Buchanan on its head. The towns of Draken and Haren in northern Holland are prototypes for a growing movement that rejects all that. What has been pioneered here is shared space, stripping away signage and lights, flattening curbs to put pavements at the same level as roads, encouraging bikes to mix with both pedestrians and cars, creating deliberate free-for-alls at junctions. It may seem counterintuitive, but the unlikely pin-up behind the concept, urban planner Hans Mondermann claims it works, to the extent that he insisted on being interviewed in the traffic lane of a roundabout. The level between the pavement and the road is minimal. It's barely noticeable. Right here, we've hardly got a lick. Uh, well, when you make these kind of designs, you should build the traffic world that is part of the world around it, and that's why we, uh, we don't make any high differences. It's just as flat, so you feel attached to that world. Each moment, a child can uh, pop up in front of your car, because it's flat. The possibility a child might jump up means cars travel slower. If a child were to be hit, the accident wouldn't be serious. This, a relatively minor accident that happened while we were filming, is apparently very unusual. Overall, the evidence is that since shared space was introduced, the number of serious accidents in Draken has tumbled while traffic flows better than it did before. Town council officials and planners have flocked from every corner of Europe to see Mondeman's theory and practice and take his principles home. Their aim? To achieve more examples a little like this. A seven-way roundabout in central London which, largely by accident, is an almost flawless example of shared space principles at work. Here, no one has obvious priority. Traffic and people mingle freely. Humans are incredibly complex and intelligent species. We adapt and respond to our surroundings with amazing agility. And what's happening here is that everybody, consciously or not, are responding to the particular circumstances. So to, for an engineer to simply place a barrier between one activity and another assumes that people are simple zombies. They're not. Unwittingly, the people in the middle of the square are acting themselves as traffic devices, as traffic calming. Um, but they're doing so simply by creating a human presence, human activity in, in public space. Humanising areas traditionally given over to cars to make them slow down is part of the theory. But also fundamental is the idea that a little bit of unsafety can be a good thing. This is Exhibition Road in West London, a thoroughfare where barriers separate cars from people. Round the corner, this is Kensington High Street, which recently underwent a major refurbishment. Gone are the barriers that stop jaywalking. Instead, it's encouraged. Bike parking down the middle of the street mean pedestrians and cyclists could pop up in front of cars anywhere, something that puts drivers on their guard. The evidence from here is encouraging, a 64% drop in pedestrian casualties. And shared space is spreading beyond Holland and London. There are schemes in Bath, Norfolk, Newcastle and Oxford. In Manchester, a swathe of the city is being redeveloped with shared space philosophy at its core. 
This computer model shows a narrow street that pedestrians are encouraged to walk down the middle of. All of these things are saying to the driver, this isn't the kind of road that I can just assume that I'm in control and don't have to pay attention to other users. It's getting back to that eye contact, where am I, what should I be doing, who should I be on the lookout for. But is all this going too far, too fast? A philosophy that relies on civility between driver and pedestrians and eye contact between the two is all very well. Very difficult for a blind person to make eye contact with somebody in a car. With a visually impaired person, they cannot make the eye contact that's necessary. But the march of shared space continues apace. Official recognition in today's report will serve only to accelerate its prominence. As they would have said in the 60s, This is our great chance to rethink our environment in a truly human and creative way. A way designed to fit the motor car realistically into our lives. It could be a pretty nice country, you know.